Hey guys, Kevin Smock with Smock Knives. Hey, uh, I've been meaning to make this video for a while and uh, figured I'd get around to it now. Um, <clears throat> when I first started off knife making, I struggled with tapping. <laughs> tapping was like my nemesis. Um, I had broken more thread forming taps than I can count. Like every other hole was a broken tap. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. And there's a lot of ways of tapping. But this one for me has worked out so well that I figured I would do a little video on it. Um, show you guys, maybe help some of you guys out that are tapping titanium and, and struggling. So the first way that I started doing it was just by hand with a thread forming tap. Um, and that's what everybody tells you to use. You know, you talk to a bunch of people, they say, use thread forming, use thread forming for titanium. Well, I'd snap these things off in a heartbeat, whether I was doing it by hand, whether I was using my mill. You know, some guys will uh, chuck this up in their mill because the mill's straight, and then um, take it out of gear, lower it, and crank it by hand. Well, I couldn't hold the part and crank it and push down on the side lever. At the, you know, you needed three hands to do it. So that never worked out for me. I even had a, I don't even know what the hell it's called. I tried looking for it, and I couldn't find it in here, and I still have it. It's a, it's a tap a uh, system that has got a base and an arm that comes up and you put the tap in it and you put the part on the bottom and you can lower it down and it keeps this this straight um, which it does keep it straight but there's really no easy way of of holding the part and every time you go back and forth the part shifts it to me it's it's hokey too uh, never like that way of doing it either so then I started trying to uh, ask other knife makers for advice on how to solve my dilemma. And one knife maker said, uh, don't use thread forming, number one. Use thread cutting. And so I got these, and I might have to tap on the screen to focus. And I'll put the information down below. And this is for a 440. Uh, so this is a cobalt 440 thread cutting. Um, and I wanted to use cobalt because that's what I use with all my my drills are when I'm drilling titanium is cobalt. So and I wanted a coating on it so that it doesn't um, uh, grab the titanium. These work out awesome. They've got three flutes on them. Okay, so I switched to these, which was a big help. But then also, I got some Tapmatics. Uh, if you don't know what a Tapmatic is, and you're tapping titanium, or, well, anything for that matter, you should look into them. Both of mine I bought used off of eBay. Granted, you can buy them new, but they're like $600 or something, and they're totally worth it, by the way. Just, you know, I, I don't know, as a full-time knife maker, being one person, not have a CNC, um, shit takes time, and all of my extra money goes towards bills, you know, because a lot of knife makers, um, you know, if you're doing it part-time, you've got a regular job that's paying your bills, and all of your knife income is extra. Well, mine's not. Mine goes towards bills, so I, tr you know, I try and save, save a buck when I can. So I got a used Tapmatic. This is the first one that I got, and the, the shaft on here was longer, and I cut it off to fit in my system that I'm going to show you here in a second. One thing to note when you get these is they have got um, numbers up here in the top because this thing, the tension is, is adjustable on the top. You turn the top, and you can set it for a different, you know, if you're... You know, like a, a 440 tap takes more tension than a 256 tap. You know, if you're trying to tap a 256 with a higher tension on there, you can snap snap the the bit. You, you've the tap. You've got to you've got to adjust the tension on there so that they work for your application. But just note that these stickers put on from the factory are not in any particular spot. They're not they're not set because I called the 
I called the company and asked them. I says, I've got this thing set on 440 and it's snapping them. Well, they says, well, that's just because they put this sticker on. It's just there for reference. <laughs> I'm like, are you freaking serious? So that was that was a struggle. So if you're having issues, if you've got a Tapmatic, check that. Another thing is the max RPMs on these are about 2,000. And I've seen guys run these and run them slow. And again, I called Tapmatic and asked them. And they said they want you want to run these things uh, as fast as you can so that the clutches can work correctly. So if you're running it slow thinking that that's better, it's not. Um, this is a wind drill press. I love these little guys, this little eight inch dude. <clears throat> you can get these things on sale. I get them at Home Depot, free shipping, you know, and they're they're like 10 bucks more expensive than a Harbor Freight one. And they've got a really nice uh, work um, machine work rest down here. Anyhow, so it's got different speeds on here and it's got 1500 and 2100. Well, 2100 to over. So I've set this one at 1500. Granted, I think I would like it to go a little bit faster than that, but but it works. <clears throat> so this drill press is set at 1500. This is the first one that I bought, and then I went off and bought a second one. Um, the reason why is because there's really no way to. I've tried marking this thing for the different taps because I I, I do two 256 and 440. Depends on what I'm doing and what the application is. But to try and figure out where to set this thing back and forth, you know, I, I got these used for like $200 a piece. It was worth having two of them, especially if one goes down. Um, to have one set up for 256 and one set up for 440 and just leave them alone. You get them where they're working and just leave it alone. Uh, this one's actually a little bit better better made well not, i wouldn't say better made when you're getting them used you don't really know how wore out they are so <clears throat> if you're gonna buy them used on ebay just beware that um sometimes the clutches are wore out a little bit more than others like this one that i have here is a little bit more worn out but they still work um and also be cautious that <clears throat> if you need them rebuilt they're expensive to rebuild and if you need a part, Tapmatic, depending on how old they are, may not have a replacement part for you, which is, you know, I called in to see if this thing might need rebuilt and, or that one. And then, so I don't, I don't, we might not even have the parts for it. So you could send it in. We could, you'd have to pay for the labor to tear it apart to even find out whether, whether it needs um, new parts or not. And we might not even have them. But if you if you luck out and you can get a good one, um, there are a couple of guys that on eBay that sell these. I don't have the name. You're just gonna have to look them up. That seem to have good reviews. You know, buy from somebody that has good reviews. It, anyhow, so I cut the shaft off of this, which was a half inch shaft, so that it would fit in my my drill press. So then I wanted to try and get a um, better way of tapping quicker than just having this set up on a drill press so i made a jig for this table and now this this drill press is just a dedicated tapping station that's all it does so what i did was is i took one of these one two three blocks it has just one hole in it and i filled the bottom in i <clears throat> well what i did is i put a piece of tape on the on the back of it flipped it over <clears throat> and I put epoxy down in the very bottom of it let it harden for several days then you take the tape off and you've got a uh, a cap on the back of this so you've got a little little pocket in there <clears throat> so now you can fill that pocket with tapping fluid and the tapping fluid that I use is this Molly D that's what everybody recommends so <clears throat> instead of having to constantly put tapping fluid in the hole that you're going to tap I've got a little well of it that's right here then I also took a um, piece of aluminum just ordered this off of McMaster car um, it's probably do I have a tape yeah I have a tape measure <clears throat> It is two and a half inches by six inches, fits this table. Put two holes in here with bolts, bolted it down. I cut a little notch out of it here, and I put a magnet. I milled a little spot in here and put a magnet. That way, this thing fits in this little tiny notch perfectly. 
and then the magnet sucks it in so it doesn't move while you're trying to work on it or while you're trying to tap. Then I also got a little rod back here, which uh, it's probably hard to see. And I apologize if I move the camera, it'll get all wonky. But there's just a, uh, a, sh a shaft back here that's got a threaded end on it that's bolted onto the table. This is what this, um, this arm here goes over and, and hits. Um, that way your clutch works. <clears throat> so then also I've got this system put on a foot pedal. That way I'm kind of hands free. I can have one hand have one hand have the part, one hand using the um, the drill press, and then the my foot actually turning it on and off. That way, if I run into an issue where this thing catches or something funky going on, I don't have to let go of the handle or my part to turn it off. I can turn it off with my foot. So let me show you how it works real quick. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. It's going to be loud, forewarning you now. And you're, you're going to hear a clicking noise. And that is this thing hitting off this post over here. It's, there's nothing wrong. It's just the way that that works. We'll turn it on. I'll dip it down into the, the tapping fluid so the things the tap's got um, tapping fluid on it, and we'll we'll tap a hole. Just like that four holes tapped <clears throat> so how many seconds did that take I don't know not very many but no broken tap <clears throat> holes are tapped I once did this for a, a batch of knives and I counted that I did like I don't know 120 taps in like five minutes <laughs> and you just keep going through and then you got to you know clean your holes out and whatever but <clears throat> that's pretty much it and the size drills that I use, uh, 440 I use a number 38, and a 256 I use a number 47, and then I go back over the hole with a larger drill bit and just chamfer the edge, knock the edge off so that it, it that tap can, can uh, ease in without hitting a rough edge. And that's it guys, so my, my camera here is uh, losing power. But I just wanted to show you a uh, really easy setup. I mean, you know, the drill press is cheap, 60 bucks or something. The parts from McMaster Car, you know, 25 bucks. <clears throat> the Tapmatic cost me 200. Completely worth it. You know, if you're tapping a lot of, a lot of handles or, or whatever, completely worth it. I probably spent this much in the first six months breaking thread forming taps at 10 or 11, 12 dollars a piece. I, I, I know I went through 20 or 30 of them. So um, hopefully this helps you guys out. Uh, really easy setup, and I love it and been using it for the last year or two. And um, works. Hopefully that, guys, hope, hopefully that helps you out. And if you have any comments, feel free. Like, subscribe. Um, greatly appreciate your guys' support back here on YouTube. And uh, hope to keep me making videos to help you guys out. All right, thanks. Later.